So in today's standard level IB A level chemistry video, we're going to be looking at drawing the shapes of molecules. Now this is a pretty disgusting topic, however if you're the sort of person that likes steps to follow, I will give you those steps and you'll be able to work out what the shape is and the bond angle every single time. So I decided the best way to do this was to draw a summary of the steps I follow in order to get to my final answer. It will probably seem a little bit confusing at the beginning, but once we look at some examples, hopefully everything will become clear. When you're doing this, first of all, you want to draw a ball and stick diagram of whatever the compound is you have been given. So let's use methane, CH4, as our example. A ball and stick diagram in this case would have carbon in the center and sticks would have hydrogen bonds coming off. So that's your ball and stick diagram. So for step two, for the central atom, work out its group number. So in this case, from our ball and stick diagram, we can see that carbon is the central atom. Carbon is in group four. So I'm going to make a note that it is in group four. From the number of sticks, count the number of bonds, ignoring whether they're single or double. So we can look at the number of sticks surrounding that carbon atom. There are four sticks belonging to the four hydrogen atoms meaning that there are four bonds. So I'm going to make a note and say that that is four. Step four. For positive ions, delete electrons. For negative ions, add electrons. Now, don't worry, this obviously isn't an ion. It's methane, it's neutral, so this isn't relevant at this point. However, further examples will show when this becomes relevant, but I wanted to write it as part of the summary. Step six add all these numbers together so we can see we've, we're simply adding 4 plus 4 in the case of methane which is 8 and then finally we want to divide by 2 to work out the number of electron domains so what's 8 divided by 2 well it's 4 so we have 4 electron domains and now it's a matter of you learning the various names and angles and shapes for things which have for example 4 electron domains two electron domains, etc., etc., which is what I'll now show you. But it is true that you will have to do quite a lot of rote learning. So, for example, you will have to learn that four electron domains is a tetrahedral shape and does have a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. So, unfortunately, there's no way of avoiding that. So, we're going to go through these in order, starting with BECL2. So, if we look at my first step, I said we need to draw a ball and stick diagram, which looks like this. Now beryllium is in group 2, and that is the central atom, so that's 2 electrons. Count the number of sticks, we have 2 sticks, so that's 2 bonds, so that's another 2 electrons. It's not charged, which means we just need to add these up in order to work out that we have 4 electrons. My next step told me to divide by 2. And we know, therefore, that we have two electron domains. You need to learn the shape for two electron domains, and it is, in fact, linear. So we're just going to draw it out again. It will look very similar to the original ball and stick diagram. And this has a bond angle of 180 degrees, which makes sense because it's in a straight line. And we say that this shape, as I've already said, is linear. Moving on, we're going to look at BF3. So our ball and stick diagram will show boron in the middle with three fluorine atoms coming off. Boron is in group three, which means it has three electrons in its outer shell. Count the number of sticks, so the number of bonds. We can see that that is three. It's an uncharged compound which means we don't need to add or subtract electrons so total is up you have six electrons according to my rules we need to then divide by two so we know we have three electron domains and you need to remember the shape for a molecule with three electron domains and that is trigonal planar And it will look like this once you finish drawing it. So again, similar to the ball and stick diagram. Because it's effectively a circle divided by 3, it means that the bond angle must therefore be 120 degrees. CH4, methane, which we've already met. We have a ball and stick diagram, which looks like this. Carbon is in group 4, which means that there are 4 electrons in the outer shell. 
there are four sticks so that's four bonds so we're going to add another four electrons for that it's a neutral compound so no need to add or subtract electrons total those up we have eight electrons according to my instructions we therefore divide by two so we know we have four electron domains the name for shape make, made up of four electron domains is tetrahedral this is a more complicated diagram to draw so you need to use dotted lines and wedges to show the 3d nature of the molecule so it looks something like this with a bond angle of 109.5 degrees now do remember that the wedge represents the hydrogens coming out of the page the dotted line shows the hydrogens going towards the page or into the page now things get more complicated if we take ammonia for example nh3 so drawing our ball and stick diagram it will look like this nitrogen the central atom is in group five so it has five electrons in its outer shell now we need to count the number of sticks and we can see that there are three sticks corresponding to the three hydrogen atoms so that's why i write three electrons here it's a neutral atom so all we need to do is now add up the total here we don't need to subtract or add electrons then we divide by two and we know that there are therefore four electron domains however only three of those electron domains are occupied by hydrogen as you can see from the diagram meaning that we have one domain left over which we know contains two electrons which we therefore know exists as a lone pair which we draw like this and it's really important to notice that lone pairs repel more strongly than bonding pairs and this will become important when we look at the new bond angles so working out the shape here well we're going to have a structure which is called pyramidal we show the lone pair here above the nitrogen we need to show the 3D nature of the compound and because the lone pairs repel more strongly it means that those hydrogens move closer together which is why their bond angle is 107 degrees. Moving on to water now, again this isn't a straightforward example so ball and stick diagram will look like this. Oxygen is the central atom, it is in group 6 which means it has 6 electrons in its outer shell. Now we're going to count the number of sticks, so that's the number of bonds, so there's two because we can see the two hydrogen atoms, so we add two electrons, add those up, and meaning that we have eight electrons, we divide by two to work out the number of domains, and therefore we have four electron domains, but we know that only two of those are occupied by hydrogen, meaning that, meaning that there are two domains left over, which we'll see as two lone pairs and again you need to learn what this looks like so you're going to have oxygen with two lone pairs coming off it two hydrogen atoms and again a reduced bond angle of 104.5 degrees due to the presence of those lone pairs this has a strange name which is that it is v-shaped or you could describe it as bent let's look at the effect of ions now so a charged particle to see what that middle chunk of my summary was really talking about so starting with our ball and stick diagram and i'm going to include the fact that it is a charged ion so nitrogen is the central atom remember nitrogen you can use your periodic table for this will show you that it is in group five which means it has five electrons in its outer shell now count the number of sticks or the number of bonds to hydrogens and we can see that that is four. However, we have a positive charge here and remember from the summary that a positive charge means that you have to remove an electron for each positive charge, which is why I'm going to say minus one electron here. So when we add that up, we do five plus four is nine, we minus one to get eight. And then as with before, we divide by two to work out the number of domains. So we have four electron domains. Check the bonds. 
Well, we've got four hydrogen atoms, which means they're occupying all the electron domains, so we have no lone pairs. So actually, this is quite a nice straightforward example. Because we've got four electron domains, no lone pairs, it means we have a bog-standard tetrahedral structure. Nitrogen in the middle, hydrogens, dotted lines, wedges. Because it's tetrahedral, it'll have a bond angle of 109.5 degrees and just include that square bracket and the positive charge. Right, I hope you guys aren't losing the will to live, but I'm determined that I'm going to give you a very comprehensive talk through of this topic. So, PF5. So, phosphorus in the middle, and then I'm just going to casually arrange my fluorines around the outside. So, check in the periodic table, you see that phosphorus is in group 5, meaning that it has 5 electrons in its outer shell. Count the number of fluorines attached, well there are five, so we're going to add those five. It's not charged, so we can simply just add them together to work out that there are ten electrons. Divide by two to work out the number of domains of electrons. We just need to remember what the shape is for five electron domains, and it's actually called trigonal bipyramidal. So once you know the method, it's quite straightforward, it's just quite a pain learning all the names and the bond angles. And this is what this will look like once you've finished drawing it out. And do pay attention to the 3D nature of it. And you need to learn a couple of bond angles here. Clearly that angle there is 90 degrees, but the angle between these two over here, because it's trigonal, it will be 120 degrees. SF6 now, so sulfur is in the center. Let's arrange our fluorines again. So sulfur is in group 6, meaning that there are 6 electrons in the outer shell. Count the number of sticks, so the number of bonds, and we can see that there are 6 bonds. It's a neutral atom, so we don't need to add or subtract electrons. We simply add them together to get 12 electrons, divide by 2 to find out the number of domains. So it's 6 domains, nice and straightforward. They're all occupied by fluorine, so we have no lone pairs. You need to learn that the shape for six domains is known as octahedral. And this is how you draw the shape. The bond angle here is 90 degrees. And the absolute last example I'm going to show you is XCF4. So let's arrange our Fs around our xenons. So our ball and stick diagram is complete. Xenon is clearly the central atom. It's in group 0 or group 8. I'm going to say group 8 because we know it has 8 electrons in its outer shell, therefore. Now, fluorine, count the number of sticks. So that's 4. It's neutral, so no need to add or subtract. So we have 12 electrons. Divide by 2 to calculate the number of domains. So we have 6 electron domains, where we can see that 4 are occupied using fluorine. There are 2 left over, which means that there are 2 lone pairs, because each domain is made up of 2 electrons. And you get a very strange shape, which looks like this. Ninety degrees, and we call this shape square planar. Right, guys, I really hope you found this helpful. I hope I've given you a foolproof way of working out what shape each molecule will be. Honestly, if you follow those steps, it works every single time. Just make sure you put effort into learning the various shape names, so linear, trigonal, planar, tetrahedral, etc. And remember, you need to note the fact that the lone pairs cause greater repulsion, so you'll see a reduction in the bond angle. Please, please, please sub if you found this video helpful. I can't tell you how much time and effort I put into working out the best way to teach you to make it seem simple. It's not simple, um, and I do put a lot of work in. So yeah, give it a like and sub if you found it helpful, and I'll be back soon, guys. Take care.